Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is a continuation of week 3's uh, lecture and we are looking at chapters uh, 13 to 18. So we will continue looking at some of the uh, way in which the courtship plots change uh, their nature and uh, what are the significances of that change. Let's look at Captain Bennick and uh, Louisa. So these are two characters who come together at Lyme Regis and if you remember Louisa she is uh, one of the Musgrove girls and she has had a, a serious accident at the Cobb in Lyme Regis and she is recovering at the home of the Harwells and suddenly we get to hear about her engagement to Captain Bennick and if you remember again Captain Bennick is uh, the man who is uh, down in the depths of uh, despair apparently because he has lost his uh, fiance uh, who is um, the sister of Captain Harville. So uh, Captain Bennick is emotionally recovering at the Harville home and Louisa is um, physically recover uh, recovering after her fall at the Cobb. So these two people uh, because of their uh, circumstances because of the fact that both of them are uh, kind of recuperating from some kind of loss is, um, is, is the fact that uh, kind of brings them together and we come to know about this uh, engagement this surprise engagement through Mary's letter to Anne Elliot uh, and uh, and, and uh, Mary, if you uh, remember, is uh, very, very uh, uh, unhappy uh, about that uh, kind of match between Bennick and Louisa. She thinks that um, a Musgrove girl uh, should uh, kind of go for a partner who is superior um, than uh, a Captain Bennick. So, uh, Mrs. Harville says that her husband feels a good deal on his poor sister's account but however Louisa is a great favorite with both and this is an excerpt from uh, Mary's letter and look at the way uh, the feelings of Captain Harville is communicated by uh, uh, Mary. It's, a, it's an indirect communication of Captain Harville's dissatisfaction with this surprise engagement between Captain Bennick and Louisa. Uh, she says that, Mary says that, Mrs. Harville says that her husband is uh, a little bit uh, upset. Um, so. It's, it's kind of removed, twice removed. The feelings of Captain Harville is twice removed here and that kind of, uh, kind of dampens the effect of the intensity of the emotion. But even though he is dissatisfied, even though Captain Harville is dissatisfied, it's very clear that uh, even to Mary that Louisa is a great favorite with both Mr. and Mrs. Harville. So they would be happy because of that fact. And Mary further adds that and that is the end you see of Captain Bennix being supposed to be an admirer of yours. So it's, it's kind of a stinging comment about uh, the potential romance that's supposed to happen between Captain Bennick. See, it hasn't come to any uh, purposeful end um, and because Captain Bennick is going to marry Louisa. So that we can see that there is a kind of a slight nastiness about uh, um, Mary Musgrove here about um, the future of uh, and Elliot and we can kind of interpret it in two ways. Firstly, we can say that uh, uh, Mary has this Elliot pride and that is exhibited at several points in the narrative. So since she has that Elliot pride, she is happy that Anne hasn't married Captain Bennick. That's one interpretation. Two, naturally slightly mean towards Anne Elliot, which is why she seems to be happy about the fact that uh, Anne is not going to be married soon. So we can also uh, kind of sense a sibling uh, rivalry there. Perhaps a rivalry that kind of uh, puts Mary ahead of 
and Elliot um, in the in terms of the marriage dynamics. Now the crops are in Bath and uh, what happens when uh, their presence is uh, seen in Bath, uh, you know, the third person narrator says that they brought with them their country habit of being almost always together. He was ordered to walk to keep off the gout and Mrs. Croft seemed to go shares with him in everything and to walk for her life to do him good and saw them whenever she went. Knowing her, their feelings as she did, it was a most attractive picture of happiness to her. This is again a very important uh, excerpt in the entire novel and um, there are several things here uh, which capture the companionate marriage ideal through these figures. So how is this embodied uh, in the uh, characters of Admiral Croft and Mrs. Croft? Firstly, Anne points out that um, they have this country habit of being almost always together. They are always seen together. They do things jointly. They are uh, um, unison in terms of uh, some of their uh, perspectives about what is good for them. And um, it's also very interesting here to note that uh, she calls this habit the country habit. It's not a town habit. It's the country habit that uh, uh, kind of um, makes couple uh, to walk together, be seen together. Uh, so it's slightly not very modern in some sense, but it also is very charming and which reflects that, uh, you know, companionate uh, egalitarian relationships uh, um, that Anne really admires. Um, so what is the immediate context for their being together? It is this. Admiral Croft has the gout. He's uh, physically ill and he has been asked to walk quite a bit to keep off this illness gout and um, Mrs. Croft joins him in all these walking expeditions and um, Anne points out that Mrs. Croft goes shares with him in everything and this is a companionate marriage ideal and if you look at the first half of the novel in the first volume we have seen uh, Mrs. Croft directing, redirecting uh, the gig in order to avoid an accident when they are traveling and that shows that A, Mrs. Croft is willing to take the initiative to protect um, themselves and B, uh, Mr. Croft, Admiral Croft is willing to let his wife intervene in order to protect their family uh, physically and, and in every other way. So uh, to go shares with him and everything points to a nature of um, equality between them in, in this uh, uh, couple. And uh, Anne sees them everywhere she goes. That's, that's very uh, interesting. Wherever she uh, goes to in Bath, there uh, Mr. and Mrs. Croft are there, which means that again, they are very mobile. And who else is mobile? If, if, you know, if they are seen, then the person who is seeing them is also going a lot of places. And that is uh, Anne Elliot too, is also very mobile. And what is the analysis that um, and uh, you know uh, draws through their uh, presence? It is this: she uh, she thinks that this is a very attractive couple because they do present a picture of happiness um, to her at least. And if you uh, kind of go back to the earlier sections, in fact to the middle section before the end of volume 1, we get a similar phrasing. Can you uh, guess where? Actually this phrase is also attached to the description of life within the Harville home in Lyme. So uh, when Anne sees that the husband, Captain Harville, is very, very proactive in uh, bringing a lot of comfort uh, and, and kind of, um, you know, uh, managing the household uh, furnishings so that the family is safe and protected. 
protected and comfortable and entertained, she thinks that that kind of home is very, very attractive. And a similar uh, um, notion of attractiveness is presented through this couple, Mr. and Mrs. Croft. Uh, when they walk together in back, they seem to carry that picture of happiness with them. They are embodiments of that attractive picture of happiness. So it is a mobile domesticity that she sees in terms of the crops. Now, Anne meets uh, Mr. Croft at a street in Bath once and this time Admiral Croft is without the wife because she has had a, a minor discomfort in her feet because of her intense walking with her husband and therefore she is at home and Mr. Croft is taking uh, his walk all by himself and he is caught by something very uh, interesting at a shop window. So he uh, stands there looking at it. That's what the illustration uh, suggests there and um, Anne goes up to him and talks to him and they talk uh, about a illustration of a ship. Um, in fact, uh, uh, Mr. Croft calls it a leaking board. It's so small that it cannot, um, you know, accommodate uh, a good number of uh, uh, sailors and he says that it's not seaworthy. Why is this um, interesting? Why is this illustration interesting? Uh, it's an illustration of an illustration, isn't it? Um, we, we know that a craft is looking at a picture of a boat which is not, um, you know, perfect which is not sound uh, if it wants to travel uh, in the seas and um, that's very symbolic I would think. It's symbolic because not all ships are seaworthy and in this novel ships are representations of uh, domesticity too. Why I make this uh, assumption because if you look at the novel especially in the context of Captain Harville uh, his home is called as uh, ship shape. It's almost as if uh, he is in the waters, he is almost uh, as if he uh, has his home on a ship uh, on the sea. So there is a very close association between ships and uh, domesticity and the implication is that not all naval domesticities are strong. There are some naval domesticities that can be weak too and that uh, implication is communicated uh, through this illustration and uh, there are references to, na uh, to sailors uh, who are not very upright and that a reference is made by Mr. Croft, um, you know, uh, crafty sailors sailors who are not upright would uh, kind of create uh, weak domesticities that is the reading. And when May, uh, when Anne and Admiral Croft talk to one another at that uh, uh, point in time at that street when Admiral Croft is looking at that illustration, uh, he asks, um, uh, he asks Anne, can I go anywhere for you or with you? Can I be of any use? And that statement is very interesting. If you look at that statement, it is uh, full of choices for Anne. What are the choices? First is can I go anywhere for you? Can I be of some service to you? Can I uh, carry out an errand for you? That's the first choice. Or can I go with you? Can we go together? Can I accompany you? That's the second choice. And we see that democratic spirit in Admiral Croft. That's very, very welcoming to Anne uh, in, in, a, in a subconscious level and he says that can I be of use to you once again embodying this idea that naval men are largely very uh, utilitarian, very useful, very productive. So that concept is also brought forth here. And Anne, she wants to know something about Captain Wentworth and uh, she tries to elicit some information from Admiral Croft uh, slightly cleverly and she says that, I hope his letter does not breathe the spirit of an ill-used man. And here she is hinting at the engagement between 
Captain Benek and Louisa. So she wants to know if he has been if he has been upset uh, because of this engagement and uh, she wants to know the state of affairs of his heart which is why she puts this loaded question and uh, what is the response and he says that Frederick is not a man to whine and complain he has too much spirit for that if the girl likes another man better it's very fit she should have him so this is what um, Croft thinks about his relative Wentworth. He says that he is not going to complain. He is not a man who can complain. He is not a man who likes to complain. He, he is not a man who uh, whines. He says that he has too much of the um, uh, spirit. He is too egoistic for that. And if some girl likes another man better than um, you know uh, himself, it is it's only very appropriate that she should have him. Once again, we see that um, you know that democratic spirit especially in the context of this statement and this spirit is very uh, revealing of Admiral Croft than uh, it is of Wentworth um, here um, and he says that Croft says that he does not give the least fling at Bennick. He is not at all bothered by Captain Bennick for marrying, uh, for uh, you know, proposing to Louisa. And um, he further states that Croft further states that he doesn't seem to have cared for this miss. And it's very important uh, that uh, Croft is not able to remember the name of Louisa. Here, if, if this character is very, very interesting or significant, uh, Croft would have remembered um, her name. That's the implication here. And he asks um, uh, Anne, what's her name? So um, the fact that he's at a loss for her name is um, significant about uh, the role and nature of Louisa Musgrove uh, in terms of the Crofts. Now, this is um, Admiral Crofts. Um, summary of uh, Wentworth's uh, state of affairs in terms of his courtship and he says that poor Frederick now he must begin all over again with somebody else I think we must get him to Bath here are pretty girls enough I'm sure it would be of no use to go to Uppercross again or uh, that other Miss Grove I find is bespoke by her cousin the young parson do you not think Miss Elliot we had better try to get him to Bath so um the options for Wentworth seem to be very limited outside of Bath. That's what Admiral Croft very innocently uh, reveals to us. He says that at Upper Cross, Wentworth is not going to meet with any uh, potential, uh, you know, uh, female uh, in order to court. So, uh, in terms of the courtship trajectory, it's a dead end. So we don't have to go there uh, or in other words um, Wentworth doesn't have to go there and the novel also doesn't return to uh, Upper Cross um, again. So uh, it's a dead end there and he says that that other girl Henrietta is also bespoke is engaged to her cousin Hater. So um, it's a no go uh, clearly at Upper Cross. And Again, it's very interesting that he is not able to remember Henrietta's name and he says that that other Musgrove girl which implies that they are um, you know, interchangeable. One Musgrove girl is the same as the other Musgrove girl. They are not very distinctive personalities. Both of them are kind of uh, superficial uh, fluffy girls as one critic would call them. So. He thinks that it's better to bring um, Wentworth to Bath where there are a lot of pretty girls um, and he can start courting uh, one of them all over again. Uh, that's, that's the fact. The implication is that Admiral Croft is perhaps not counting Anne Elliot as one of the pretty girls.
is she uh, one among them? Uh, it doesn't seem that way from the way he talks to um, Anne, but we don't know. It's a speculation. It's a reasonable speculation to have. And, and this uh, statement is also very interesting that he has to start all over again. His courtship uh, plots have failed in one way or another, and he has to begin a new plot. And uh, that plot will regenerate the narrative, which seems to be at a dead end at this point of time with um, Henrietta tied up uh, with a hater, Louisa must grow with, um, you know, Captain Benwick and Captain Wentworth doesn't seem to have anybody else at this point of time. So let's kind of uh, summarize the courtship, uh, you know, trajectories that have been weaved so far. And as I mentioned, Captain Wentworth's uh, trajectory with Louisa fails because Louisa goes for Captain Benwick. And this trajectory has been keeping the readers uh, in suspense so far because we have been uh, anticipating his um, kind of potential marriage to Louisa and that kind of uh, you know uh, deconstructs after uh, the surprise engagement announced by them. And uh, we already know that Wentworth cannot go for Henrietta because Henrietta is already engaged to Charles uh, Hayter or in other words there has been an understanding between Henrietta and Charles Hayter who are cousins. So the two co courtship trajectories fall at different stages and um, the novel is coming to a critical situation where uh, there is apparently no uh, uh, you know potential uh, figure of romantic interest for Wentworth that is the case with him. In terms of Anne Elliot, uh, there has been talk about uh, a potential romance between Anne and Benwick. That does not take off because, um, you know, even though Anne expects a visit from him, uh, even though Lady expects, uh, Lady Russell expects a visit from Captain Benwick um, in order uh, for him to come and court Anne Elliot, that does not take off and the interest shifts to Mr. Elliot for Anne. And even though Anne is uh, fascinated by Mr. Elliot in some way, uh, that fascination does not uh, push her into, um, you know, uh, fantasizing, uh, 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 at least a fantasizing about uh, marriage with Mr. Elliot. She thinks he is not a good life partner, even if Captain Wentworth is, um, you know, uh, not going to marry her at all. So, she is not going to settle for Mr. Elliot um, e e even at the worst case scenario. So, she has already made up her mind before she gets the second and uh, in a proposal from Captain Wentworth. So, um, at this moment in the novel all these uh, courtship choices are um, you know uh, failing for the two central characters Wentworth and Anne. So, who are the characters who are left out that is Anne and Wentworth and what else can they do? They have to start courting one another. Thank you for watching. I will continue in the next session.